everybody it's your girl all right welcome back to another late nights with all right welcome back to another podcast i'm your host aria moore the aria moore and i'm back so guys as you can see i got another guest i'm rolling in with these guests give me my stripes please but i have another guest and we about to do some little girl talk so celeste is her name and you are from new york yeah. What part of New York are you from? Originally from Queens is where my family is at. I've been Ooh. in Kentucky a while though. You know, How long you been in Kentucky? Girl, a while. I have my, my daughter's from Louisville. Yeah, <laughs> Born and raised. Cross, you know, yeah. so I definitely love y'all city. You know, it's a vibe, but it's I a mean, it's a drive vibe. Well, it's a vibe depending on where you go. It's worse. It's, we, we started in Radcliffe. We started in Radcliffe outside oh. of Fort Knox, so there's worse. Really? I felt compared to New York. Baby, we chocolate. We only belong in certain parts of certain states. Okay? Oh, see, I didn't know that. We went to New York. Did we go to Queens? I feel like we did go to Queens. I really liked it out there. Yeah. The food is different. The people are different. It's, the air is different. The air is different. It's, it's, it seems like a vibe out there. Just it's a, in general. It's, it's, it's hard to explain without people actually experiencing it. You have yeah. to experience it to, in order to understand. Because yeah, right. everything on social media, online is what it is. The way right. they're breathing it, taking it in, eating the food, seeing the people. Yeah, every single day. And what it's, do you miss it? Yes, I do. Wow. I miss, you know, being closer to the family and the food. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just, constant movement you know it's it's, it's fast fast pace out there yes. when we visited um i really wish i would have went by myself first right. because i took my daughter queen and then mm-hmm. my sister she took her kids mm-hmm. and then my mom came and she had no kids mm-hmm. <laughs> That's how you're and to. i was like grabbing my daughter's hand like come on like i felt yes. like if i took my eyes off of her for a second yes. she would just be missing you have to keep going that was scary but that you- was so scary and then i got out of breath quick so i was like walking i'm like jesus christ <laughs> get used to it though i got used to it i think like the last day Mm -hmm. i got used to it Mm -hmm. but i i want to go back but i want to just stay in times square you like manhattan i liked it all the people just kind of walking around and just being bougie yeah that's exactly what it is being bougie yeah i'm bougie i know that's right and And i like my bougie sceneries I'm all about being in existence with people you want to be with. So, yeah. if you want to be bougie, you got to live that lifestyle. So, I love being in those environments. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. have my share of the hood. Yeah. Okay. I'm Dang. from I'm from there. We Look, three years ago, we was living in the projects, me and my kids. Well, right. probably about four years, three or four years ago. I don't know. I lose count. I try not to count no more. But, you know, so, I know what it's like. I done been there, been there, done that. Right. But, like. When I get into other environments, I'm just like, I feel so connected and so me. I don't feel like I'm on edge as much. Whereas when I'm in more of a ghetto environment, I feel more on um, go. Yeah, more intense. You like, know, so, so you feel, do you feel more nervous in the hood versus? I do now. Okay. I do now. And I think it has something to do with trauma, too. Because okay. I fought a lot. Got into so yeah. many fights. And then bad relationships after bad relationships. So, yeah. I think it just brings up past traumas for me. Yeah. Whereas other environments, more uppity environments, they haven't mm-hmm. done it to me. Mm-hmm. It's more peaceful. Mm-hmm. So, I don't you know. Well, I hope that sounded right. Well, <laughs> I, think, I think it's a little bit different for me because I've been in both, right? Yeah. So... Being in New York with my grandmother and all the other grandchildren that yeah. was, wasn't raised by their parents, you right. know, it was all in there, you know. So it wasn't the easiest. We wasn't always in the place, safest places. But mm-hmm. coming here and then, you know, being a black girl and then playing yeah. soccer, you know, you're in places where it's not many people like me. That's true. So, you're in a- so you like playing soccer? You girl, just yeah. threw that in there, playing soccer. What? We play soccer. <laughs> We're a soccer playing film. We're athletic family. We wow. Are- all over the place with it so coming here and experiencing that i felt more nervous being in white neighborhoods and wow in white schools versus where i'm from because i feel like the eyes was always on me i didn't yeah. feel like i could be myself i feel like yeah. i had to be that token black girl that girl that has to be the example for yeah. all the black girls you know so, so it's hard I feel like. you have this demeanor about yourself that I fucking love. It? It's like I'm it's just a vibe. Mm. You know, like sometimes I feel like people try too hard. Yeah, and you don't do that. 
There's no you reason. just it's just whoever you are is just who you are. I like you. Yeah. I remember the first time you came around. I was just like, <laughs> I like her. I, it's just this. I don't know what it is about you yet. I have to be around you a lot more mm-hmm. to like say specifics. Right. But you do have a very very good energy about yourself, and mm-hmm. I like that. And don't ever change that. I appreciate because that. it draws people in. Yeah. Because like now I'm sitting here, I'm like, I want to know a little bit more about you. Like, yeah. so you have one child. Yes. How right. old is she? She's eleven. She'll be twelve later this year in December. And she's driving you crazy. Well, um, it's you it's, was about to get into it, and I feel like. You said she's 12? She'll be 12 later this year. She's going to 6th grade. And I got a 12-year-old. Yes. Let's talk about it because they, they play games. It. <laughs> it's just, I, it's, I think it's, it's, a, it's hard to try to figure out how to parent yourself out of your child. I know. You know, so. <laughs> Whew, that's was, a good one. Yeah, so I was, a, I was a young mom and, you know, I had a lot of wisdom i thought yeah you know and i thought i could do everything and then you know now raising a child that's showing the same things that i did showing the same faces that i showed whoever was raising me or my mom or my grandmother it's hard to you know try to find that balance but with me and like you said my vibe i'm not going to yell i'm not going to go off i'm not going to call you names because i didn't like that that's not what she's like you can hear my kids back there yeah right y'all so i got my kids here and it's late and it's time for him to go, go home. I'm going to put you on pause real quick. Let's open that door. Y'all getting ready to see how I get down. <clears throat> hey! Don't let me hear nothing else. And that, I mean that. You can shut that door. One thing about being a parent right now, and I'm glad that that just happened. Yeah. Y'all, I don't know if y'all heard them, but you heard them, right? This microphone picks up a lot. And... People are underestimating us as mothers. Yeah. Literally, we are carrying so much as yeah. far as like being a parent. And guys don't have the same struggles that we have. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you're trying to deal with your daughter and her changes and her attitude. You're trying to beat you out of her. Not yeah. not really. Y'all know what I'm trying to right. say. But you, how do you do that? And my kids are, I have five kids. I have four girls. My four daughters are here right now. And they are all me. Yes. And it drives me crazy. Different versions, right? So many different yeah. versions of me. Yeah. They, uh, their attitudes when they get upset. They're very vocal, and yeah. I'm so vocal. So it's just like if I say something, I can't help how I feel. So right. whether they're around or not, I'm just I don't like that, you know. So they're the same way. I don't like that. Even towards me, if I make them feel a way, they're gonna tell me I'm making them feel a way, right. and it's hard. It's really hard. And then you had, she's going through preteen stages. Yes. I'm not even there yet with my daughters. I'm there with my son. I, mean, <sighs> I just wasn't ready, you know, and I don't even have sisters myself. Really? I don't. I wasn't even, I, wow. I didn't know my mother myself. So it's, it's I, I was really, you Do know. Do you feel I, stuck right now? I felt a way. I did. It's, it's hard to find, like I said, that balance. You know, I was raised with a lot of men, with boys. I have brothers, you know. And it's, like I said, trying to find that balance is something that I always knew my whole life. You know, trying to raise this young woman, this yeah. successful woman, you know, to be in this type of life, this world. So your daughter is going to be a reflection of you. Yes. At the end of the day. And she has So to. she's going to go through her roller coasters. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I went through my roller coasters. And I know there was a point where my mama was probably like, I don't know who you are and where you going. But the fact that at the end of that road, if everything that I've been through, my mama was a really good role model for me mm-hmm. she was hard working she was kind mm-hmm. she was patient as patient as she could be right. even when she lose patience she was patient and look at me now right so let her go through what she's going through okay. sometimes all you can do is just have that conversation you might want to pull your hair out sometimes i want to pull my hair out all the time right all the time especially with my son because my son's 12 mm-hmm he knows it all. They think they do. Girl. Don't know nothing. But bigger than me, you know, it'd be hard. She is she's, bigger than you. My son's not bigger than me. She's bigger than me. She's <laughs> don't play with it. Me. Don't play with it. Don't play I'm with about it. about height, weight, shoe size. No, she's, she's, <laughs> she's I know. Bigger, so. so are you probably feeling like you have to. Yeah, I really, like, really got to sign up. 
You know what? And it's hard, you know, especially and she don't have a really a good relationship with her father. Yeah. You know, and even though that I have a partner, you know, it's certain boundaries, certain things that she don't feel comfortable saying yeah. with him and certain things vice versa, you know, so And he's not gonna feel like he wants to take discipline to another level either. I have that problem as it's well. Hard for him. Yeah. So sometimes like especially with my son, like I feel like when it comes to the girls I'm, they're my, they might change at that age as well, but I'm not there yet with right. them, so I can't speak on it, right. but I can speak from my son's perspective. Right. So I'll go to my spouse and be like, look, I need you to go have a conversation with him because at this point I'm about to body rock him. Yes. And I don't want to body rock him because right. I love him dearly, and I know violence is not going to solve anything. Right. But it gets to a point where it's just like, what am I supposed to do, do to get do? that respect? So... When you're dealing with someone who, for one, he doesn't have children of his own. Mm -hmm. So, all of my kids are not his. Right. So, he's stepping in as a stepfather, as a male figure. Right. He don't want to go in there and be like, hey, bro, like, all aggressive. You right. can't do this. And then we also have past trauma, too. Yes. So, you're talking about, like, my kids was being abused by their dad. So, well, my son's stepdad, old dad, but my two youngest bio oh, father okay. he helped raise them for so many years so i just say dad's is easier but um i think he doesn't want to present himself in that way right. to him and i understand that but it gets to a point where it starts to get out of hand right. you know what i'm saying what do we do as mothers what do we really do right we suffer yeah most sacrifice. of the times we suffer we mm -hmm. sacrifice um we can talk about it all day but Who's going to come and help us make changes that need to be made? Nobody's going to really do that. It's just something we have to do. But I think the biggest thing for me is trying not to get to that space where I'm just like, fuck it all. You know fuck what I'm saying? All. Because that's the reason why I have one child. Yeah. You know, I am so traumatized. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But how ever the whole process. Has it been that hard for you? Girl. No. Yes. I'm never. so sorry. No. Like, I, I'm traumatized. I have another kid. Like, you I'm have no surprised idea. sometimes that I have as many as I do. Yeah. Um, I will say recently. See, that's so emotional. Um, okay, I can have that conversation with you because why else are we here? Yeah. But I feel like recently I feel the most alone as a mother. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just because, like, Everybody is like, I'm, please don't. My makeup look good. <laughs> girl, but this is the top period. You got to have. Girl, my makeup look fire. <laughs> but it's but it's, it's, go ahead. Speak your truth. I got so many people on me right now. Yeah, I, the pressure is so high, mm -hmm. and sometimes I just be wanting to just give up and just throw in the flag because I don't get breaks with my kids. Right. And I don't care how many times I say it to people that are around me, like, I'm busy. I got to take my kids here. I got to do this. My kids are with me when I record. My kids is with me when I'm doing people's makeup. And my kids are with me when I do photo shoots and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, they're with me. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, sometimes I'll try to open up, like, I need a break. I need a break. And it seems like no matter how, it seems like the more I say it, the less I get it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And... It's just so hard as a mother, just like feeling alone. Like who is, who gonna come to our rescue while we trying to rescue everybody else? Mm -hmm. Who's gonna come to us? And then you would think like when you're in a relationship, your spouse sometimes they don't even know how to be there for us. They think just oh I can come home maybe if I cook dinner for you today. They'll take they some weight. Void. Yeah. yeah, they fill that void or you know. Now, my partner, he works. He does his right. part. Right. You know, he's a hustler. He mm -hmm. does everything he can. But that void that's in me of I feel alone as a mom, it seems like it's just not going nowhere. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you feel that all the time is constant? Or do you feel like it's something that you need to look for, something that you need to fill that void with? Um, it's hitting me hard now because I have so much to do. Okay. And I can't focus on my dreams and my business and growing my business. Like, my business is actually growing now. Right. And it's harder because it's like I'm waking up in the morning and 
I just automatically at six o'clock I'm running, 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 running. And then at this time you see we still going and I have to go home and I have to outside of a business owner, I'm a content creator, so I have to edit, I have to schedule videos, I have to I just have so much to do and pick out their school clothes, make sure they take showers, make sure they eat, I gotta talk to them, I gotta play with them, I gotta watch movies with them, I gotta I it's just so much I have to do where I just feel like now that I'm more consistent with my dreams. Being a mom just seems to just be 10 times harder for me. And, like, sometimes just be like, just give me a week. (laughs) You know, a week where nobody calls me. I always tell people, please stop calling my phone. Like, please just stop calling my phone. And people will call my phone and just talk to me about their problems. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm being swallowed. Right. Like, I'm being swallowed. And I keep a smile on my face. Like any other mother does. Right. I keep a smile on my face, but I just, I know I can't depend on nobody when it comes to the real need. When it what comes to my, inside. yeah, I need somebody to come and take my kids sometimes for a few days. Yeah. I need that. And I can't send my kids. Like I can't, <laughs> it's crazy. I can't send my, my kids with their other parent. Right. You know, my son's dad, he's been in prison forever pretty much his whole life and then my daughter's dad he's he's an abuser you know so it's like i want my kids in an environment that i can trust something that's safe somewhere safe and i'm the only safe place Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i'm their only safe place so everywhere i go they're with me but i think it ties back into that word right sacrifice right like yeah right now i'm feeling it right because it's the mm-hmm. weight it's like okay you can carry like something that's one pound right yeah but if you got 17 things that weigh one pound you're carrying 17 pounds carrying and then all much. of a sudden it's too much it's too much you know so i think finding that line finding that balance of what you need you yeah. know in your village you know yeah. we're here for you you know so i think finding that village you know even with me coming out here my family that did come to Kentucky, they're in Radcliffe. I came yeah. to Louisville. It doesn't matter because I feel like my village was here. Yeah. My support was here. That's you true. Know? So that's what we have to look towards. Yeah, it sucks now, but yeah. we're grinding for the future. Like, we're we grinding. don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We are like, grinding. we so close to it. We can taste it, you know? I know. <laughs> so that's why we're doing that pressure. It, like, and that could be why the pressure's on me times 10 because I'm it just is. like, I'm. Man, I'm trying to be the first person in my family to really make it. Yes. So I'm doing that. You, I got my sister that's like, I'm proud of you. Keep going. Keep going. And I know she going through stuff. And it's just like, God, I feel it. I feel everybody that I love. I feel their hurt. I feel their pain. I feel their dreams. I feel all of that. And right now, I'm like, I, I try to put it to the side and do what I got to do. But it's like, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's super hard. Outside of like being a mother, though. Because I'll be damned if I mess up this makeup. And then. And then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Period. Mm-hmm. Outside of being a mother, like, what did you see your life being? I don't know. I was always the girl that was like, I'm not having no kids. I'm yeah. I'm going to be living my best life traveling. And yeah. I got pregnant in my senior year. Like, I really. Do you know how much you can still do with your daughter? Girl, like, love. you know what? Maybe that's what she needs. Mm-hmm. Travel. Just you and her. You know what? Now I'm glad we're on the topic of travel. We try to go. I try to take her to New York for her birthday. Her birthday's Aww. end of December. So in between. She's a December baby? Is she a Sagittarius? or? Oh, she's full of cap, girl. Capricorn. Okay. Never December mind. 30. I was going to say, in she's a good Christmas sign. Between Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> Mm. You know, so I wanted to take her up there. It's a different experience for her. You know what I'm saying? She didn't live in a house like we did. You know, trying to do all these things. Yeah. And I booked with Southwest. And I know you've seen what happened <laughs> with Southwest during the they whole... They so full of shit. <laughs> okay, yo, let's break it down. Three tickets. Me, my daughter, and my brother. We were right. supposed to go. $2,200. What? Canceled. I got a text message on my phone. You can't even get through at this point because the lines are so booked. Okay, what? Cool. So then they offer something online after a couple of days because everybody's flights is canceled. I, right. I will say I am thankful that we didn't go there and then get stranded because they were yeah. family stranded in the airport. Wow. Sitting for days for a week, you know, so. That's crazy. I'm thankful for that. But on the other hand, <laughs> trying to <laughs> like, find what? something for her to do at 11 mm. in her birthday, December 30th, was extremely hard. And she, she was understanding. She really yeah. is. I mean, we really grew up together. 
Oh, you know, so sweet. how old was you when you had her? Seventeen. Yeah, I, I mean, was we sixteen really, when I had my yeah, first kid. Yeah, like we really grew up together. So you, she you, you probably have the same relationship that I have with my son. Yes. Like my son, see me go through every day, yeah. literally from sixteen yes. to now, and like. I want to say probably like six months ago, he came into the kitchen while I was cooking. And he was just like, I just want to say, he don't, when I say my son don't, like, I don't say, I, I know my son loved me. Right. But he don't want to be bothered with me either. No. So, not that age, they don't. Well, sometimes I talk about my son, I think people think like, oh, he just hate his mama. I know my no. son loves me. He just shows it to me in a different way. But when he does show it to me, it means the world to me. So, like, he just came in the kitchen. He was just like. I just want to say that I'm proud of you. And I was like, oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Right. And I was like, what made you say that? And he was just like, he was like, you just been through a lot. And you're doing your thing. That's yes, what he said. He was like, you just been through a lot. And he said, I think you're doing good. And I was like, you think I'm doing good? I was like, well, I appreciate you saying that. Right. Because he's seen he's seen stuff that they had my girls wouldn't they would die if they seen some of the right. stuff he's seen they'll right. be like mama you was doing what right you that right. was mama you whoo. my girls wouldn't like me <laughs> they'll probably love me but they would probably be so judgmental looking at you different looking at yeah. me very different because i had to do some things you know what i'm saying and I my know. son he witnessed things that a child shouldn't have to witness right but i made a choice to bring him in this world at 16 right so sometimes when he have an attitude, I'll be like, maybe he's just upset because he remembers some things. But he's just been a shitty ass teenager too. I'm about to say, girl, don't take that because everything that preteen pre stage. They say some of the words. I promise you, I'm just praying. And look, my brother's in the military, and I told her yeah. you will get sent to base. Like, you know, he about to get sent to base. Don't play with me. <laughs> Is it that bad? It's not the I, I it's make, that I, bad. I think because when I see your daughter, I see this innocent young lady. Now I know, I know it's bad with my son and mouth. <laughs> it's the mouth. mouth for me. And you know, they got access for, to everything. To so everything. You can't tell them anything. You can't. That's the worst. That's social media. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Because for you to even speak that way or even talk that loud in my house, mm. you need to pay taxes first. Yeah. For you to even walk that hard on my floor, because why are you stomping? Girl, I told my son, I said, you're going to school next year with Skechers. See? What do you think I'm playing? Because how yeah. is it that you got your own room? nice size room you got everything you need your own tv you got your own game systems you got laptops cell phones all of this stuff i took all of that stuff okay he kept breaking his phone yeah. i'm going to replace the phone yeah the last time he broke his phone he broke it on a bike he walks in the house he's like <laughs> i broke my phone again i was i just looked at him Easy. and i took it i that was like six seven months ago how long ago was that it had been a minute. He thought I was about to go get another phone. You got real privilege. Yeah. We didn't have phones. We didn't have TikTok. We didn't have... We probably... Have, I don't we know if YouTube have. was a thing, but we just didn't have nothing. We didn't have. Period. That was it. I, I, I Box really TV. No, I, no you, I, I really got upset earlier with my daughter. I'm glad you said that because I do her laundry for her. You mm -hmm. know, give it to All you got to do is put it up. Put you know it. what I'm saying? Oh, we're talking about the same kid. Her age, when I was her age, I was doing my own laundry. Yes. We didn't even have no washing and dryer. I was taking myself yep. at 11 to a laundry mat and washing my clothes. We did that. So, with the privilege, like, I'm, I, and I get, that's why I think I get so frustrated with her because you have no idea how good you have it. How good you There's have it. There's children now, like, your age that has to wash their own clothes. Yep. You don't even know how to wash your clothes. Wow. That's the issue I have with my son is... Everything I say to him is just, oh, oh, I was going to do it. I, I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need you to keep that to yourself. Right. Keep it to yourself. And just like you said, you do her laundry and all you got to do is pit it up. Girl, I don't know how many times I done caught this man putting his laundry in another dirty clothes basket. See. Instead of putting it up. So one day I peeped it. At first, he was getting away with it for a minute. Yeah, sure. But one time I was like. Your laundry on Friday is always hella full. For no reason. I've yeah. seen you wear that pair of pants you got on now three times this week. Okay. Three times this week. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm and you always wore the same hoodie. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine how many times you wore the shirt under the hoodie. But you know how teenagers do with their hoodies, girl. Girls, think. 
He got mad at me for taking a hoodie and washing it. It needs to be washed. They wear one hoodie all summer. All summer. In all winter. Yeah, the same one. Same one. This <laughs> is <laughs> dirty. <laughs> but no, like, seriously, I was like, there's no way your basket's this full. Yeah. And I'm just, you, you're giving me more work for no reason. Mm -hmm. So I made him um, wash everything himself, put it in the dryer, take it and fold it. And I said, when you get done, I need to see the baskets. I need to see everything on hangers. I need to see every single thing. So he just tries to act like he don't want to put nothing up. Yeah. So I've gotten to a point where I really have to just kind of hover over him and really just be up on him. And then that just makes the relationship worse because you already don't want me in your face. Right. But I'm going to make sure my house is clean and I'm going to make sure that laundry is put up. Right. Because one, detergent's too high, but you don't know that. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to throw your trash away. Right. And it attracts bugs and insects and all of that, but you don't know that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just walking around careless and it's the fact that they just think like everything we say is wrong. Right. But everything we saying is actually right. right. Like I had to tell my son, I said, if you can't take care of yourself in my household with simple stuff. Taking a shower, presenting yourself like somebody, like a nice young man, being respectful, doing the dishes and doing them the right way. Because you're going to have chores regardless. If you can't do those simple things, what are you going to do when it's time for you to get a job? Right. You're going to mope? You're going to cry? No, I'm going to work. No, you're not. Because I'm telling you to work now for the stuff that I provide for you. Like the TV, the internet, the, the games, privilege. the phone. You keep begging for me to get back them shoes that cost almost two hundred dollars that you want to walk on with the on the laces and stuff. Don't want to tie your shoe. It's it's the <laughs> little stuff that be ticking me off about him, and I just be like, you better get it together. Yeah, get it together. Yeah, I done had it. Sometimes too, and not even just with our attitude. There's certain things though that kind of I kind of get like let down about because yeah. I feel like. There's certain things I can't really correct her or I can't provide those insights for her. Like maybe sometimes, maybe some things she's missing. Yeah. And I can't provide. That's why I go always go back to like, dang, maybe, you know, she do need somebody there. And like I said, my man, he does what he can. But yeah. it kind of makes me upset with her dad because why are you not putting forth the effort? You steady, you know, producing, producing more children. Yeah. And mm -hmm. no shade to baby daddy. But. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's like how can you have a how can you continue? You want to, you know, what I'm saying, continue have children, have children when mm -hmm. the relationship you have with the ones you already have here is not where it needs exactly. to be. It's not up to par, and that's just men, especially mm -hmm. the sh the crappy ones. They tend to do that. They're gonna move on with their lives and they're gonna do whatever, and we're stuck with the responsibility of being a mother because we love our kids despite yeah. how they are we love them yeah and we're gonna be here for them yeah. and having conversations like this i love because we got zero advice for each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's relatable mm -hmm. <laughs> like other mothers that's watching this is like i know i can feel that too yeah because... but we're not gonna have advice for each other but no. we need a place to just at least get off our chest so when we go home we can just look at her and and look at her with love. Of like, course. you know what I'm saying? I'm not mad at you no more. At least I got it off my chest. And sometimes yeah. that's all we need is to just get off our chest because yeah. we really can't change anything. But my advice to you is I want to see you try to do something with her and see if that can build a different bond. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, by yourself. Yeah. Not with anybody. Just you and her. You need to figure out who this little girl is at 12. Yeah. Because she's going through something. And we want to acknowledge that transition that she's going through and catch it early. Mm -hmm. So just taking her out and just getting to know her. Okay. What do you want to do today? Mm -hmm. Let's just go and do it. Okay. Don't even ask. Even if it's weird, like, don't even just, okay. You want to go pick dirt? Okay. Right. I'm going to go get some shovels. Like, whatever. Whatever she's you know, into. Whatever yeah. it is that she's into. Because right now she's probably just trying to find herself. Yeah. And... I need to do the same thing with my son. Yeah. Um, I've been saying it. Like, I have to figure out what I can do with just him by himself. Not mm -hmm. with his sisters. Not with nobody. Just right. me and him. So, I'm going to do the same thing. And let's just get to know our kids. Because I feel like if we get to know them, maybe it'll be a little bit easier on us. Yeah. It and should. my task to you, <laughs> since you give a task, <laughs> is to find that space, you know. You're so creative. You're so yeah. giving. You're so loving. You know, yeah. find what that void is 
find that hobby, whatever, yeah. and get to it and figure out who you can drop your kids off. I don't What's know. crazy is drop this is my hobby. But there's something else that's there for you. Something that, else, yeah. That's so much bigger. Yeah. Because there's always a plan that we see, but there's always a plan that's bigger that God yeah, sees for exactly. us, right? We can't even imagine what he has in store for us. Yeah. We see something this small and the goal he has for us is as big as this building. Exactly. To, you know what I'm that's saying? That's true. So, you find that, and then split, drop these kids off, girl. Get your speed. I told you, barbecue all don't, summer, waterfront. If you doing barbecue, I'm like, I'm bringing the kids, summer. but I'm leaving. The I'm going to have to do something. Drop the kids off, just don't leave them without no diapers or no formula and bring them all water. <laughs> well, thank God none of them wear diapers. Period. <laughs> bring the kids all summer. It's, you deserve it. You've been working yeah. so hard, and I don't think we get to hear that enough. Yeah. You deserve your time. Thank you. You deserve <laughs> time without your children, without yeah. your man. You deserve to take days off, a week off. You deserve. It's same to you. Yeah. It's same to you. We deserve. We all moms stand up like, it's, this is the year. It's 2023 right now where we're recording this. And we're going to just try to make some changes as far as like our whole demeanor. Yes. You know, we. I want. I like getting cute. We're not going to be stressful. I'm not about to keep getting cute walking around with these kids. <laughs> Y'all got to go. That's it. But that's it. I was with my... Man, what? I was not never home. Any breaks. Like, wow. And this is the craziest thing. Like, whoever I was with, what changed? You know? Yeah. Like, I'm not about to sit here and work all summer when the grandparents is off all summer. Hello, Ooh. auntie, uncle. Mama, you hear that? Hmm. I'm just saying <laughs> We gonna throw it I'm just saying. I'm Somebody's just saying. Catch it. Pizzy rolls reality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. But I really appreciate you taking time and of coming course. here today. I definitely feel like we need to do this again. It's never enough time to talk about life. There's so much that we can talk about. Right. But unfortunately, for this podcast, that is it, guys. If you want to see Miss Celeste come back, let me know down in the comments down below because we can touch so many different things together. Yes. Your vibe is a vibe. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, guys, that's so that's it. That's it. Right? Bye. <laughs> <laughs>